بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جنرمن ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ان کارپوریٹ گورننس وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ اینڈ ان دس وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی ٹو ڈے اسٹڈینگ اندر کے اسٹڈی وچ از کال دا ڈلیما آف ایتھیکل ڈسیزن میکنگ وین ایور اے پرسن از ان اے لیڈرشپ پوزیشن مینی ڈسیزنس ہیو ٹو بی ٹیکن سم ٹائمز ون اگریز ود دیم اینڈ سم ٹائمز ون ڈز ناٹ ہاؤ ایور اٹ از دا ریسپانسبلٹی آف اے لیڈر ٹو فالو دا پرنسپلس آف ٹرانسپیرنسی اکاؤنٹیبلٹی اینڈ meritocracy however many times we see that certain decisions are pressurized based upon nepotism and favoritism and we basically uh, end up in a uh, very uh, transparent and a very delicate situation which requires ethical decision making now in this particular case study we'll be looking at uh, the uh, rise of mr zaid hussain who joined anc uh, xyz limited when it was a very small company way back in 2004 But in 12 years, he was able to rise from the uh, position of manager coordination to become the CEO, which again reflects the fact that the company was encouraging uh, competency-based and also uh, honest leadership to come forward. Now, in 2016, uh, ANZ basically uh, faced uh, and were able to have a wonderful year uh, because all of its projects were proceeding successfully. Uh, everything seemed perfect. Uh, but Uh, Zaid Hussain was complementing his options. Now, what we see is, is that the past year had seen a flurry of activity in the planning of the infrastructure project. Certain phone calls and incidents in the past few weeks had left Zaid Hussain disturbed. The first phone call came from one of the founding directors of ANC XYZ Limited, inquiring about the shortlisting of firms for the construction of the project. So again, what we see is, is that even though everything was going marvelously and wonderfully for the company, but When one large multi-billion uh, dollar project uh, of construction was under consideration, then uh, he was getting phone calls from very influential people because the stakes were so high. And then the phone call which really disturbed him was the one from one of his founding directors asking about uh, the shortlisting of different firms. Now, earlier, Mr. Zaid uh, had not been satisfied with the selection process of the project architect and the abrupt inclusion of ABC builders. So uh, this was uh, bothering him. Uh, because the architect was uh, appointed upon favoritism and now the sudden inclusion of ACB builders. Uh, he included ABC builders and called all shorter terms uh, to submit technical and financial proposals. The proposals were evaluated and ABC builders came forth in the comparison sheet. The exercise was repeated just to ensure that it's more transparent and ABC builders came third in the evaluation. Zaid Hussain uh, stipulated uh, as per SOPs uh, recommended Uh, the QRST limited to be given the multi-billion contract. So he basically worked on meritocracy and awarded the contract to someone else. However, then there was a backlash and two of the directors, Mr. Osama and Mr. Shahid, uh, they pressurized Mr. Zaid uh, to award the contract to ABC. And when Mr. Zaid did not oblige, then the chairman of ANC limited also directed Zaid Hussain to award the contract to ABC builders. And this is where the dilemma basically starts to emerge. The next day, Zaid Hussain uh, met with his two trusted chief officers and discussed the situation with them. The CFO informed him that the son of the chairman was a de facto partner in ABC Builders. So that was what was under the water because in the iceberg effect, uh, he could not see what were the real issues, but this was the real issue that uh, this was uh, a personalized issue. So the questions which emerged from the uh, case study and something that I would like you to uh, basically juggle your mind is, What decisions should Zaid Hussain take and why? That's very important. Is there any other option for Zaid Hussain in this current scenario? And then why has the BOD changed its leadership stance from merit, professionalism and process-based decision-making to pragmatism and practically coupled with arbitrariness in decision-making? So this is a very important question and you must think out uh, what are the various reasons for all the stakeholders to basically uh, come out uh, with such a situation and uh, compromise uh, the company in itself, but they are very interested in taking it forward. Uh, is there any conflict of interest in this situation? In your opinion, is the chairman of ANC Limited an ethical leader uh, explained with cogent arguments? So you have these five questions, ladies and gentlemen. I would like you to attempt them in the light of uh, the case study. Uh, and it's a very interesting case study because uh, many questions uh, tend to emerge. And therefore, if you apply your mind properly, you would be able to come out with the right answers. Thank you so much.